travel that it pulls it down is determines the stitch size. And that's why it's adjustable. Okay, let's start with the river. This is the bottom, this is the top of a tappet plate. There is the bottom of the tappet plate. That's the uplift cam. That's the V cam. It does exactly the same thing. Now the uplift cam is set in its height, just like the uplift cam here. Just a piece of metal, not adjustable. But you can travel, have the needle butt come in and travel up the uplift cam or under the uplift cam. Just like on one side it goes over and the other side it goes under. If you're in this, they won't come up the uplift cam, they won't make the wave, they won't form a stitch. So that is called the out of work position on this lever. Okay? The in work position is what makes the needles travel on this path coming up over the uplift cam and making the wave. On my machine, you have just seen me move that lever for the second time in its history. The only time I ever move this lever <coughs> is to demonstrate or to figure out how it worked. The rest of the time it sits in that position and is never moved. I don't use it. I don't use it. Okay, now we're looking at the V cab. Now on these machines, it's called a dog leg. And it has an adjuster knob. If I loosen the adjuster knob, uh, excuse me a second, let me grab a pair of pliers. Some people do. Um, when I go to a crank in, how many socks am I going to produce? None. Me? None. <laughs> so do I need a ton of yarn in 50 <laughs> socks? No, uh -uh. I brought yarn as demonstration. Um, when I actually go to a crank in and I'm not teaching, I still don't make a sock because I end up walking around every day. I've never finished a sock at a crank in. Not once, ever. <laughs> so do I need all of this stuff? No. My story. <laughs> so my stuff is here as demonstration. I, how many times have I changed cylinders? Not. Do I need all of them? No, they're there for demonstrations. So anyway, so if I had a pair of pliers, I would loosen this nut and I could move, and this thing would move up and down like this. The further in it moves, the bigger the stitch it makes. Out, smaller stitch. Up, smaller, down, bigger. So we think of not which way do you turn the knob, but which way does the cam move? So you'll see, hear me, and on like on Ravelry, when I do posts and stuff, I say V cam down. I don't say turn the knob clockwise. I say whatever it takes to move the V cam down. Because this is a Gerhardt, it turns one way, or the gear turns the opposite way but the V-cam moves down. Okay? So that's the tappet plate for a CSM. And I'm gonna put a needle butt in and I'm gonna show you what happens. So here's a needle butt. It travels through the thing. It comes out. See how far out it sticks? Normally it's here. And then it comes in and it travels up and it sticks out real far. And then it's pulled in and the further it's pulled in, the bigger the stitch it makes. Okay? Just like here, the further down it pulls, the bigger stitch it makes. All right, so now how do we put it together? Well, it depends on what kind of machine you have. Okay? This is the Erlbacher with the hybrid or the new plate, 
And so this has a centering pin, and it goes up. And I want you to notice something. If you look at this, see how it's kind of shiny? That's Vaseline. It's literally coated. Here, feel, touch. It is. It's Vaseline, okay? The reason for that, this is steel, this is aluminum. Steel and aluminum in direct contact with each other will do what is called galling. It will literally strip chunks of the aluminum out and they will adhere to the steel. You then have to grind them off or file them off. They're totally, yeah, it's called galling. You do not want galling. You get galling, toss it away. So how do you know if your piece is that combination of metal? Real easy. Magnets. Feel the weight. Oh, okay. I don't want to or see stick it. magnet to it. Magnet. Yep. But don't worry. You'll know real quick because of what type of machine you have. Okay. If you have the Gerhardt, the Aerobacher, with the hybrid river, it's steel and aluminum. Yeah, that's probably not. Okay. If yours has the little, the two nuts on top, the screw and the nut, you've got the original style. Hi, uh, river arm. This is called the hybrid river arm or the version 2.0. Now, please, nobody worry about my little gray river arm. I need this, okay? This is an original Gerhardt or an original Airbacher, which is square and looks real industrial. So I took a file to it and rounded it off to make it pretty. Good. That's the only difference. It's the same river arm. I just wanted it to look more antique, okay? And then you tighten this nut, and you want this to spin easily, but you don't want any slop in it, okay? So maximum distance from here to here is about the thickness of a piece of paper, okay? Should move easy, but it shouldn't have any slop, okay? Now you're gonna take that assembly, it's river arm, tappet plate, dial, and there's a little pin which should fit in here. There it is. We hit it on you. <laughs> this is called a drive pin. Okay, on this style. And what the drive pin does is it goes as the river arm comes around, it hits against that screw and now drives the tappet plate. Okay? That's all it does, except for one more thing. See the screw? It's adjustable. That is how you time a river. Okay? It's gonna become important in a minute. So the drive pin drives this around. Well, what stops it? Well, that thing right there. It's called the river fin. And inside the machines, there's a river stop. Some machines, the river stop is fixed. Some machines, the river stop is adjustable. Well, this one's adjustable, has screws on it. But you have to get, you have to take the river off, loosen the screws with a screwdriver, move this, tighten them up, put it back on. It takes about three tries to get it done. But I'm gonna tell you a secret. That got adjusted one time three years ago and it hasn't been adjusted since. Your fin is right there, and on the inside of your machine, there's a river stop, and it's called the thumb. It sits inside your machine, and it should be flush up against the cylinder, and then there's a knob here, which turns it and makes it do this. So the fin, the, the, rib, the thumb does this as it rotates, okay? And what that is for is for aligning the slots of the river up with the slots of the cylinder. All right, there. So you'll notice the slots of the river are aligned with the slots of the cylinder. See? Right there. Okay. Now, on some machines, like the Aerobachers, there's a little blue mark. 
where the river stock is. That's put on at the factory. Okay? You'll notice I have a blue stop on my river. Well, that's done with blue nail polish so I can visually just look and go, okay, they're aligned. And the distance between the two is the thickness of my yarn. And that's why we have to adjust. Because some yarn's thinner, some yarn's thicker. And so the slot alignment may get off. Okay? And sometimes you may want to adjust your machine to what is called half pitch. Let me demonstrate half pitch. Right now, the river slots are aligned with the cylinder slots. If I put a river needle in there and crank, here's what's going to happen. You hit. If I take that out, I have a river. So one slot has either a cylinder or a river, but not both. Or I can adjust the machine so that the river goes in between halfway. So that way if you want to knit every, every stitch. Okay, I've got a 72, yeah. 72. Okay. I'm going to knit 144 needles at one time in a one by one pattern. One cylinder, one river, one cylinder, one river, one cylinder, one river, one cylinder. It's 144 needles turning and burning at the same time. Everybody seen the video of the 96, 96 spinning and cranking at one by one, half pitch? It's on my, it's on my YouTube thing. 90, that's 192 needles turning and burning at the same time, just on 200 needles knitting at the same time. It's the most beautiful thing you ever saw. The yarn I used for the video is bright yellow. It's, a, it's this yarn right here. And it forms this beautiful wave. It just goes, you get this wave. It's just the most beautiful thing. And I, every once in a while, I put it on. My 9696 is actually set up right now for a half pitch. And if you put it on and you set it all up and get and you just you crank and it just goes like that and it just makes this beautiful wave. Anyway, it's here. We know what we do inside. Uh entertainment. <laughs> just for the pure entertainment value. Could you make a sock up? Yeah. What I use the 9696 for is using thin yarn for making dress socks. Yeah. Because the slots are so thin, you can only get thin yarn in it anyway. So you have all these needles. Um, anybody here ever counted the, how many stitches are in a pair of Walmart white athletic no. socks? They're knit on 240 needles machines. There's 240 stitches around a standard Walmart white athletic sock. How fine is that? Well, do it once. If you ever get one that gets a hole in it, pull some of that yarn out. See how thick that yarn is. It's like one quarter of the thickness of this. It's like hair. So they, their needles are little tiny, 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 tiny things. There are tons of them. And actually, the cylinder is about that big around. So the standard diameter of a uh, sock knitting machine, um, the, the computerized ones that do the you know Walmart socks. About that big. Cylinder's about like that. I've seen them with 480 needles in one cylinder. But there are the ones that big around. And then the sock shrinks down. Anyway, that's, let's get back on topic. So, we have the river dial, the tappet plate, the river arm, the stop, and the fin underneath, which is the stopper. Okay? And it's set, and what you do is you Put the dial and the river on the machine, align it so that the fin is aligned with the stop, set it down, and then rotate it. And you want to rotate this in the direction that the yarn carrier goes. So your yarn carrier goes this way, so we want to rotate. If you don't get it on just right, as soon as you start to rotate, it's going to do this. See it? And that's going to cause you all problems in the world. 
you're going to crank, and all of a sudden this whole machine is going to go <laughs> bird nest. Yeah. Or it's going to jam the needles. Jam the needles like you would not believe. But the tapper plate moves in the opposite direction. Okay? Don't worry if you have to. Don't put any needles in, just crank it. It'll set to itself nine times out of ten. Okay? If you, if you really want to get this in your head, don't put any yarn in it. Don't put any needles in it. Just put the rubber on and crank it. And you'll see what happens. The, 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 the dial will go around and all of a sudden you'll hear it and it'll go click and it'll stop. And then the tappet plate will go up against the drive pin and then it'll start to spin and everything will work. Okay? So, that's aligning the slots with the stop against the thumb or the fin against the stop. That's aligning this. We already know about this. It's driven by this. Now the next thing is how high does this fit set? Well, I'm going to crank around a little bit until I can get to my adjuster area. Oh, and I've lost my little black brass screw thing. Uh, yeah, let me borrow yours, Allison. I'll probably find it in the bottom of my container. On the Erlbacher, there is a little Allen wrench right up underneath here. No, I've got the Allen wrench. Oh, I'm missing the lock. No. The screw? And I've lost my spacer and everything. Oh, no. I've got the Allen screw, but there's this, I was wondering why that was so low. There was supposed to be a little spacer in here. Is it gone gone? It's a little piece of aluminum about that big. Yeah, um, that's kind of necessary. Somewhere. Yeah, because I remember you going this in it like right here. Okay, so right don't worry, up. we'll find it. Maybe under the book. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate, we'll fix it, and then we'll come back. This way. Okay? It'll hold you with the screw. Do you need huh? a screw? I've got the screw. Well, it'll hold you with the screw. No, mine won't. Yours won't? No, nope. my screw's short. Do you need a... What do you need? You won't have it because it's custom made from my machine. Oh. Okay, some machines, you adjust the height, and it's all done with this arm right here. There's sometimes there's a screw there, and if you screw the screw down, the arm moves up. This one, there's a little screw inside right there, and you reach in with an Allen wrench, and you screw that little screw up or down, and it makes the arm go up and down. Basically, all you're doing is this. Okay, moving that up and down. However your machine works, it does exactly the same thing. This was working yesterday, so those screws were here yesterday. Because I put this on, I went, oh, okay. Because I was getting ready for the class. So anyway, not going to worry about it. How high do you want a river dial? Well, if you remember yesterday, we started with the one thing, the zero point, which is the cylinder. It's not adjustable. The uplift cams are set to the cylinder. The V cam is set to the cylinder. The yarn carrier is adjusted to the cylinder. Now we're going to adjust the river to the cylinder. And here's how you do it. You look at it like this, you put a river needle in. And I'm gonna do it on this side first, okay? I'm just gonna drop a stitch off of here. And 
I want you to look at when the river needle comes out. I'll do one on this side in just a second. Okay. See it? Now look underneath. Remember, we adjusted the yarn carrier to be as close as possible to the cylinder needles without hitting. I want the same spacing between the river hook and the yarn carrier. I want it to be about the same. Okay? So you move the river up and down until the distance between the bottom of the yarn carrier and the hook is about the same as it is up here. Okay? See it move up and down? It's going to be about that high. Look at the how much space there is between the river dial and the cylinder. The old school, the guys who first started out with these machines, and you have to give them credit. They figured out a way of working around these machines with no but no knowledge, no books, and they just figured it out. But the old school was when you adjusted the river arm, you wanted the needles to just pass over the top of the cylinder. We now know that's probably not the best way. A way that works better is this. Adjust it up until that needle is about the same distance from the yarn carrier as the cylinder needles are. It gives you a lot of room for your yarn, your knitting, to pass between the cylinder and the river. If you're way down here, it's binding up between the river and the cylinder. Okay, so open up that space, and the way you do it is right there. Okay? Now I'll do it around on the other side. So everybody over here can see. Nobody commented. Did you see what I just did? I swapped the stitch. I'll show you how I did it in just a minute. You didn't even notice that I did it. Usually one person goes, oh, how'd you do that? Okay, I'm gonna crank around, now watch this needle. You will come over here, ready? There it comes out. See the distance? From here to here? That's low. Where I want it is right there. Right there. So the distance whoop, from here to here is about the same as it is from here to here. From the top of the gold thing on the on yeah. the From here side. to here, from the bottom of the yarn carrier to there. the top of the hook yeah. Yeah. is about the same from the yarn carrier to the hook. Okay. The written material say the distance of a credit card? No, no more than the distance of a credit card. Oh. The phrase we use is no further than the thickness of a credit card. That's just a mnemonic device so you can remember. In actuality, it's as close as you can get without hitting, but no more than the thickness of a credit card. Okay. Okay? Now, a lot of what I've been telling you over the past while is stuff that may or may not be different for different people, okay? That's okay. There is no right, there is no wrong. The, the secret is, does it work? Can you knit a sock successfully? What I've done is taken a bunch of knowledge from other people, added some of my own, and we figured it out over time. This was not an overnight discovery. This took four and a half years to get this down, okay? Can you repeat that needle and the spacing sure. again one more time? We want the distance Please. from okay. the needle hook yeah, okay. to the yarn carrier yeah. to be the same as from needle hook mm -hmm. to yarn carrier. 
the distance of um, the distance um, spacing. spacing. Right here. Oh, right here. Okay. See the spacing? Okay. You yeah. See okay. that? That spacing. As close as possible. There. Yeah. But not touching. And, yeah. As close as possible without hitting. Without hitting. And okay. no more than the thickness of a credit card. Okay. I guess the part that confused me was the needle was sticking way sticking out. Way yep. Out. Yep. That's you're looking at this. Look. Right? You're looking there, and the distance and right you there. You just eyeball it the process. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the up and down distance. That's not, too far. Not left and right. That's too, too tight. Way too tight. Okay, I okay. see that now. See how much space there is? Yeah. And Where you right want it is right about there. Right about there. Okay. You take your hook and just be able to push it in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. The knitting should pass easily between right. the cylinder and the river. Okay? okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and that would be for you. Nope. That distance of the height of the river is set by the needles and the yarn carrier. It has nothing to do with yarn. Nothing to do with yarn. The only thing that has to do with yarn is the alignment of these slots. Thicker yarn between the stop and the fin will move it. It'll, it'll actually move like this a little bit. Okay? That'll come in when I talk about timing, okay? You're gonna see that alignment thing. Because that has to do with hula, okay? You've heard the term hula? Okay, well, there's a term out there in the in the tomorrow called hula. I'll show you what it, what, what it is and explain it, and we'll show you the fix for it, okay? Let's take a break. Okay, because I may have gotten you to the point of just about right.